welcome to Telescopes.net. My name is Dr. D, your host, Daniel Mouncey, AKA Dr. D. This is gonna be a little introduction into white light solar filters and hydrogen alpha solar filters, which are the most common. Now, of course, the white lights are the most inexpensive and a great introductory into looking at sunspots and things of that nature, which is really cool. There's different ways you can go about it. Now, as some of you may know, in 2017, August 2017, there's gonna be this cool total solar eclipse. And you gotta be in the right place to see this, but it's exciting, because we rarely get them in the United States. I think they get them in India like every other year or something. So we're just like, ugh, we don't get enough of that. Anyway, so the first way to do it is to use your polymer filters. Now, the way you do this, and use safety at all times, ladies and gentlemen, you look down and then carefully look up at this sun. Am I speaking slowly enough? Okay, so we're looking at the sun and you get kind of an orange colored view with these and they have shades as well. Unfortunately, we don't have one for display to show you, but nevertheless, they're only a dollar or two and in some cases it might even be free if you're going to a solar event. So, another option is your solar white light filters. This is glass by Thousand Oaks Optical. They've been around for many years. You can Put these on the front of your telescope and look at the sun in complete safe D. And basically they have some felt and you snug it over the sides of your telescope. It's really cool. They come in a variety of sizes. You can use them on 14 inch SCTs. Now, of course, if you were to get an entire thing glass, it's gonna cost a little bit more money. But you can do what's called an off-axis mask. So say the scope is this big, you can just allocate the little area right here to the small solar filter and get your, you know, your solar photons going in there. Next, we have the Bader Planetarium Mylar, kind of a, so they call it solar film. It looks like kind of like a tin foil. You can even play drums with it. So this is really cool. And then what you do is you put this on the front of your telescope and check out these little adjustments here. So say you have a telescope that has a dew cap that's a little bit different in size, you can uh, you know adjust it a little bit. So you got some flexibility there. And then of course, they got some safety Velcro on the front, which is really cool and you just add that to the side, and you put this on. This produces a really nice view. Now, the color that you see in here is white, pure white. And if you want to have the sun have a little bit of color when you're looking through the eyepiece, just add a color filter to your eyepiece. But always make sure you have your solar filter on the front for full safety. And these will block out 99.99% or something like that. 99.999999. There's some decimal point that's left for light to come through. Nevertheless, that's good enough. We now have these solar wedges. These things are so cool. These produce, in my opinion, the highest contrast, really beautiful looking views, but they're only supposed to be used with refractors. You're not gonna use them with a Schmidt Cassegrain or a Newtonian. You wouldn't even achieve focus with a Newtonian with something like this inserted. Wouldn't make any sense. Anyway, they come an inch and a quarter or two inch. We got the big one here. These things are really cool. So you can use two inch eyepieces or inch and a quarter eyepieces. So you see have your two inch, inch and a quarter adapter there. They come with a neutral density filter built inside. The, the colors that you see is completely optional. If you put a neutral density filter, it's gonna look kind of a pure white color. And then if you have like a color filter, you can kind of zest it up a little bit and add your own little colors to it. But these are completely safe. You insert them in the back of your scope and they offer really nice resolution. Check this out. This is a polymer filter. It's threaded so you can use it in one of your DSLR cameras so you can safely shoot the sun with your DSLR camera during the eclipse. Or you can just shoot the sun whenever you want. So all you have to do here is just, uh, you screw this on. The color that polymer produces is like an orange color. It's kind of cool. You know, we like to think of the sun as a main sequence star and in our minds it's kind of an orange color. But I think in reality, if we saw it, it would kind of have a whitish look to it, maybe a little bit of off-white look to it. But it is so cool to see the sun in orange color. It's kind of neat. You know, but like I said, you can use filters. Now we are moving into hydrogen alpha. That is where the personal solar telescope from Coronado comes in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the biggest selling hydrogen alpha scope in the history of hydrogen alpha. Now Daystar filters were the guys that really kind of started out, Dell Woods and whatnot. But this thing is really cool. They're reasonably priced somewhere around um, anywhere from five to $700. And um, this is if you want to, you know, if you want to, really see dynamic features on the sun, like fire and flames. This is the way to do it. Really cool, really popular. They come with little threads on that. We're gonna get into more detail about that, ladies and gentlemen. We will discuss the personal solar telescope in more detail so you understand it. But if you really wanna see the fire and flames going on with uh, the sun's surface, this is the way to do it. 
This is so cool, ladies and gentlemen. This is another type of filter called the chromosphere. This is another way to see different frequencies of the sun, ladies and gentlemen, and Daystar offers several different options of types of solar filters that you can use to see different parts of the atmosphere of the sun at different frequencies and different colors and stuff. I just think this is really cool. Now, this is kind of neat because all you have to do is insert it into the back of the telescope. Certainly, there are certain precautions and things of that sort that are needed in order to utilize these filters to the full potential. But the neat thing about it, it's got a two inch, inch and a quarter barrel on it, and it, uh, you can use it in a refractor. And in some cases, depending on the type of scope, you can add a, what they call an ERF filter or energy rejection filter, ERF for short. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, for more details, visit our website at telescopes.net or you can call our toll-free number at 888-427-8766. Dr. D out.